So, well, you know, there's a back and forth as to, uh, let's say we get a trade deal, but China is so weak that it might not be able to deliver on a promise to buy more American goods. Caterpillar had signaled yesterday that things were slipping in that region. But out comes Boeing today to indicate, well, not with them and not in that region and not in China. So is China and its economic problems, or at least building economic problems, such a factor here? To United Capital CEO Joe Duran. Joe, what do you think? I think what you're seeing uh, everywhere was that we were all very concerned that uh, big companies would use the, the trade war and the, uh, the China slowdown as an excuse. And that's not coming through. We had several companies at the end of last year give warnings. But uh, Apple came through, Boeing came through. They're not using China as an excuse. They are saying things a little slower, but not as bad as we, had, we were concerned about. And what you're seeing, I think, measured most easily by the small caps is that the underlying U.S. economy is still in great shape and that that 20 percent correction we had at the end of last year might have been a little too much uh, and that there was some adjustment required, but probably not that extreme. And, and what you're seeing so far this year is the market taking out some of that pessimism and reflecting a very nice uh, market performance almost across the board. All right. So is today more reflection of reality or yesterday when it seemed like Everything was the opposite. <laughs> well, even yesterday, if you looked at the small caps, they did quite well. You're right about that. I think that. everyone is expecting, uh, you'll be expecting, by the way, I think, that this trade discussion will not be resolved until the very last minutes of February and that there might be another extension. But I think it's highly unlikely that we're going to see that 25% tariff come in. If that does happen, you're going to see a lot of uh, a completely different market reaction. And that's why small caps have been a pretty good safe haven so far. The second thing I'd look at is the whole Russia thing. Uh, at the end of last year, uh, with the he head of defense leaving and all the noise that was happening, the president was on shaky legs. That appears to be disappearing, and, and it looks like, again, that is the, the, the wild card we don't know about. But I think what you'll see is some volatility, but all, the, all that I see looks to an 8 to 12 percent market by year end. We already have a lot of that game done this year. And as goes January, that go, that's how goes the year. And that was true last year for sure. January was down. Even though we had a good rally, it ended up being a tough year. We started this year well. I think you're going to see a generally constructive market with a little bit more volatility than we've seen in the last few years. You know, the Federal Reserve is about an hour away from announcing something on interest rates. Not expected to hike today, but Jerome Powell is expected to give some guidance today. What, what do you expect? I think he's going to talk about the easing, uh, the quantitative easing, and whether he's going to continue doing it systematically. And if we see any hint of, and we've seen some flexibility in the rates and in quantitative easing as well, if that continues, then one of the biggest concerns for future volatility is this constant suck of liquidity they're taking out of the system. If that is put on pause because of the global slowdown, and there's no question the rest of the world has slowed significantly in Germany and China and the rest and the emerging markets. And so I think what you might see is continued flexibility. And if he keeps that tone up, again, the Fed will stop being in the front line of the story. And we'll go back to talking about earnings and, and earnings growth and, and the strength of the dollar, which has been really quite impactful on large companies. All right. I do want to bring our Susan Lee into that earnings story, Joe. Uh, and, you know, Susan, we've been talking about how through this earnings process here, seven out of 10 companies have handily beaten, uh, albeit the ratcheted down estimates that were yeah. out there, but they've beaten them. Yeah. And that's a pretty bullish sign. Yeah, it is a very bullish sign because, we, uh, you know, we did a, a bit of a gasp when we saw the Boeing numbers this morning because they this is what you call crushing it. When you beat to earnings estimates on profit by a dollar, a billion dollars on revenue, and you guide for a dollar more in terms of earnings for 2019, it was just, uh, it was really very positive. And they're going to actually ship, what, 905 planes in 2019. They had a record 2018, so it's only going to get better from here, and that's despite the trouble that we keep talking about in terms of the U.S.-China trade talks and the tensions and China slowing down. So I thought that was very positive and it set the sentiment and the tone for today. You know, Apple was sort of the latest, uh, Susan, of the, of the tech giants to, to indicate the worst is over, or at least that's the perception here given the run-up in the stock. Uh, because while still in bear market territory, all the others that were 
uh, briefly, like Amazon and, and mm -hmm. you know, Google have, have recovered. I'm not back to those old highs by any means. And most but, analysts um, yeah. actually think, uh, Neil, sorry, I was just talking to, I was doing a lot of research for the Apple earnings yesterday, and most of them, but with this report card, <laughs> say that the worst may be behind us when it comes to Apple. It wasn't a great quarter. Was it good enough? Yes. I mean, take a look at the, uh, the revenue. It beat on lowered expectations, also earnings in terms of profit as well. And it's all about services because that's how basically Apple wants to transition itself in the future. It's no longer just a hardware company. They're all about services. They want to get to $20 billion when it comes to revenue over the next five years. And they're pretty much on track to do that. We may not get unit sales, but I think the most important uh, element here in this report card was the fact that we finally got for the first time in Apple's history gross margins on services. And they're making over 60 percent on iTunes and even iPay and the like. You name it. No, no, I was uh, startled by that. And, and Joe Duran, it continues a theme we've had of the technology giants that have turned things around, even in an IBM's case, where uh, its cloud business was a big reason for the, the street to say, hey, we missed that and the importance of that. To shade you for that. In the case of Microsoft, we'll get more details of this after uh, the closing bell when it reports. But it's Azure uh, online uh, business is booming. Uh, similarly, we've, we've seen the same improvement in, in a host of others that have dramatically beefed up their services businesses uh, to, to that, uh, you know, triumphant performance go a lot of investor dollars, huh? Well, you've taken the words right out of my mouth. The example I wanted to give for Apple was Microsoft. If you remember when Microsoft was shifting to the cloud side of the house, same thing with Amazon. When they were launching a new business, and yet we hadn't, it wasn't impactful enough yet. Uh, everyone, the stock went down a lot, everyone was skeptical, and where Microsoft is today, it's a fundamentally different company. What Amazon did a couple quarters ago when they said, we're not going to report unit sales as much, we're going to focus on the entire business because we're a services business, it's still only about 16, 18% of the revenue stream, but it's growing a lot, it has massive margins, and what I think you'll see a year from now, the conversation will be completely different about Apple. It's still a hardware sales company, a consumer product company, but it's also going to be a, a, a services company. And that business growing at the rate it is, in another year or two will be at 20, 25 percent, looking at it growing to 30 to 40 percent. And we won't care as much about the, the lack of sales of phones because everyone's going to have a different product of Apple where they use all their services. It's still not there, but that's where Apple's looking to head. And they, I think Tim Cook wisely said, we've got to do what Microsoft did, we've got to do what Amazon did. And, and go to, to a different service model. Well, we'll see on that. Susan Lee, I don't know if it's too early to say rush back to the FANG stocks, but all the FANG <laughs> stocks are doing okay lately. Yeah, well, have you heard of the four A's? I mean, that's the new term as well. Apparently, Fang is uh, out of vogue. It's uh, the four A's now, so it's Alphabet, Amazon, Apple, and Alibaba, which also reported today. And Alibaba is off to the races as well. Similarly to not Facebook, right? Not not Facebook. No, yeah. no, no. But similarly to to Apple, you know, they had a, what their worst holiday quarter in many years. Still, though, there's a lot of you know guidance going forward that the business could just grow so much more because it's not just an online sales for Alibaba and the like they also do Alipay as well. That's not included so far in the evaluations, but there's just a lot more to grow. And uh, the Fourier should trump the uh, the Fang stocks now. I think. All right, Susan. Final word, Joe Duran. Always a pleasure. Thank you guys very very much.